So in the first part of this video series about my testimony, I spoke about how the Lord saved me uh, by coming directly to me and speaking on the night of August 16, 2021. And I understood eventually later that by having accepted that the uh, Bible is the Word of God, I had accepted Jesus being that He is the Word. And so in that moment, I was born again. So if you haven't watched the video, I definitely encourage you to go back as I told the story of how I um, ended up to, to that particular moment in which I was saved. So as soon as I started reading the Bible, of course, my eyes opened and I started to understand the, the intention and the vision and the direction that Christ has for all, each one of us. And one of the first things, the first concepts uh, that I understood and I was taught by the Holy Spirit, which at that moment, I'm still not clear that it is the Holy Spirit uh, giving me these insights and revelations. But the first thing I understood was that I should repent of my sins. Uh, but it was smaller things as well, getting angry or t telling lies or all, all the things that uh, we all do and I did as a sinner. Um, all the way into that moment. So repenting of sins became something that I understood as fundamental in the process of transformation as the Holy Spirit was working through me, which again, at this point, I'm still not uh, understanding that it is the Holy Spirit. This is still a, a baby Christian, as, as sometimes we, we say. So as I did that, and the only thing I knew was the Catholic Church um, until that moment. Obviously, the, the Holy Spirit had not come out and told me, well, you have to leave the Catholic Church. Yeah, it didn't say that. Uh, but as I'm reading scripture, one of the things I realized was to repent. So knowing only the Catholic Church, I went back to the Catholic Church for, for the first month or two. And immediately, my first thought was I need to find a priest to, to get confession because that's what I knew. And so I live in New York and um, it took me about maybe two to three weeks and I went to maybe 10 to 15 different churches between the city and the area where we live and not one priest was available for confession eventually after a couple of weeks i found i walked into a church not far from my house and i saw two uh, catholic priests inside and i called them i was the only person in in that uh, church and i called them and said uh, uh, may i may i get confession they both looked at me and said, we don't have time now, come back another time. That was the moment where the Holy Spirit showed me how the Catholic Church is not a true church. Because I thought, what if I walk out of this church and a truck runs me over and I die? Will I die in my sins? In that moment, I understood how the Holy Spirit wanted me to see and experience for myself what is the truth about Christ and what is not. So as I started to learn that not all churches are true churches and that not all churches teach the truth, I started to do more research and listening to other pastors speak about the various, let's call them denominations for now. And I developed a, a keen interest in the subject of apologetics. And this would be that I started to study deeply the Catholic Church, uh, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness, and all the way to Islam. And I started to go in depth into the errors, into the deception of most of these so-called religions and the fact that indeed religion is not what Christ was teaching us, but he was teaching us a relationship, a following him, not so much the church, but the church being in fact the assembly of the members which have the Holy Spirit inside them and therefore constitute the body of Christ. They are part of what we call the body of Christ. That was a major revelation for me. So I had to undo a lot of concepts, of course, and through that, especially through the understanding that the Catholic Church is not a true church, that's not to say that every Catholic person is not a true believer, but because some of them are. But in essence, the Catholic institution has some major errors 
and of course they're they're flipping it around onto the reformed churches but one of the errors that i realized very very quickly because that starts in exodus um, is the error of idolatry and idolatry seemed from my catholic upbringings something that is not pertaining to the catholic church but indeed it is because exodus 20 verse 4 speaks clearly about not making any images and so does deuteronomy uh, in chapter 4 verse 15. they both speak about clearly any graven image is a form of idolatry and so from that i started to unfold the holy spirit would teach me and point out to me um, things that needed to be seen uh, for me to get a better understanding and that's where i started to look at jehovah's witness and the fact that uh, some of these cults uh, don't identify christ as god they, they have no respect for christ as god and so in that particular sense because they don't see christ as god they're technically worshiping an angel or something that is not god so they're committing idolatry in their own uh, intention of of worshiping uh, Christ as the Savior but in fact their their version of Christ is not a true Christ so this took some time but what is it was a major process of maybe about two to three months into this subject of apologetics which led me to understand further truths into what is the true Church of Christ so then at this point the the immersion on in the understanding and the knowledge I was and still am so hungry to understand everything about Christ, everything about the truth of Christ, everything about the gospel. And I would spend hours and hours reading the Bible, studying pastors, comparing them, notes, trying to really go deep and, and understand the absolute truth of the word of God. And the Holy Spirit was convicting me every step of the way. I mean, I literally immerse myself fully and completely into the study knowledge of, uh, of God. At that point, uh, uh, one of the uh, people that was working with us um, on several projects, is, I've st I still operate as an architect um, as of today. So this is my job. Um, she was a Christian and she actually had known me when she came into our organization before um, I was saved she was a Christian and she after she recognized that I I got saved uh, she started showing me some of the truths and some of the things that I didn't know very well and so one day we sat down and she explained to me the concept of the blood atonement and that just simply blew my mind so again, growing up Catholic, uh, I had no idea what the blood atonement was. You know, I, I knew, of course, that Christ died for our sins. And, and for me, it was this idea of dying as a, as a general sacrifice. But I had no concept that, in fact, if Christ had died uh, of like natural death, it, it, it would be the same thing. No, it wasn't. So she explained to me the idea that sin equals death in God's eyes, in God's economy. Uh, this is something I had no idea. And in fact, it comes from Leviticus 17. Now, at that point, once once we recognize that that's the case, in God's economy, only blood can uh, wash away sin. Again, Leviticus 17. Now, at this moment, I have no idea what, what that, that that was the, the case. So then she explains to me that because of the Old Covenant, blood sacrifice was made through animals. And this is how uh, the priest uh, would cleanse and atone for the sins of the Israelites. Until, of course, God created a new covenant. And this was through the blood of Christ, which is a blood that has a power that is so bigger than anything we can possibly imagine. And that blood of Christ has the power to cleanse every single sin of every single person on earth. The moment that you accept him as your Lord and Savior, in their words, you believe and follow him, uh, which is, again, accepting his word, which means following his word, which is, again, the Bible as it, it, in its entirety. Once I got the idea of the blood atonement, I, I was in tears. I was 
absolutely moved by the incredible finished work of Christ on the cross. I, I really got into the depths and the final understanding that Ephesians 2, 6 is not through our works, but it's through his work. Now, the moment that we accept that, we are saved and then we begin to bear fruit as a result of him, Christ, through the Holy Spirit doing work in us. And that gives the results uh, that you know, we can call them works, but they, in fact, they're the effects, the result of Christ doing work inside of us, which then produces uh, these fruits. So, so that completely changed everything because in the Catholic Church and as well as some of these other religions where there's Islam, Mormonism and all, there's these works that you have to do. And for me, definition of work is something you do to get paid. So you expect a reward out of it as, as opposed to a fruit, which, you know, is, is born naturally off the plant as a result of being connected to the vine or the trunk, uh, which is Christ. So that switched everything instantaneously. And this is where I think I uh, went to a, a, a new level of evangelism in the sense that I didn't even know what evangelism was. But I just felt like sharing this with everybody I knew, of course, you know, my family, they're, they're Catholic, they still are, and a lot of other people that were either trapped in cults or, or false religions, and certainly, you know, even even uh, believers of Islam and, and whatnot. And so I started a process of evangelizing in the sense of talking to people and explain to them the word of God. And at this point, I'm not even done reading the whole word, but I'm, I'm studying so much. I'm watching so many pastors speaking. I'm reading all or pieces and parts of the Bible while I'm continuing my kind of linear process of going through. So it was an incredible transformation. This is all, it was only a few months into this. Um, let's say about two to three months. This is when the Holy Spirit led me to find our local church, uh, which is a spirit filled church. And immediately the day that we got there, we knew that that was home. So somehow, somehow through doing some research online, we ended up in this, uh, local church. I, I didn't know what denomination it was or it wasn't. We just went there. It was an incredible atmosphere that a kids program uh, because we have young children. Uh, we felt at home. The Holy Spirit was there. The pastor, Pastor Jason, Jason was incredible and st still is, obviously. Uh, we felt immediately at home. And this was right around October, November, again, after being saved in, in August. So it's a very, very quick transformation. So we started attending church every single Sunday and, um, you know, it was just a completely different experience, but we felt the presence of the Holy Spirit there. Immediately after that, as I was turning 50 uh, that December, I asked the pastor to baptize us in water. And we, my wife and I got baptized, both of us, in January of this year, 2022. It was, it was January 23 of 2022. Uh, we both got baptized in water. I baptized my wife and my wife baptized me uh, within the congregation. It was an, an incredible moment, again, of transformation. So in a fairly quick uh, period of time, I went from being saved, thinking I was going back to the Catholic Church, to being uh, my eyes completely fully open and moving into a Reformed Church and being baptized in water within less than six months. In the next video, I'll talk to you about how um, eventually I started to start to hear from God as, as I develop a, a prayer life, uh, which, of course, I had no idea you know, what it was before. I probably prayed, um, you know, kind of a short prayer. Maybe uh, I, I would pray the, the Our Father prayer, you know, every, every day for a long time. But that was it. Um, and so I went from spending maybe, I don't know, 20 hours total per year on God to spending over 2,000 years, uh, just, just, just this last year, between prayers and studying, reading the Bible, attending church, uh, you know, watching Christian content and studying other religions and, 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 and kind of putting the time into developing a relationship with the Lord. That, of course, is a tr tremendous transformation. While still running my office, while still, you know, uh, having to do work and, and providing for my family, I had some uh, wonderful clients, very supportive, of course, and you know we we continue to work through all this. But uh, every spare time that I had, so I give up all, all types of entertainment, whether it was golf or TV or watching movies. All that was gone very very quickly. Instead, all that time was put into the Lord, and I think that's 
what made the major difference is um, adding or taking out the entertainment, the worldly stuff, and instead using all of that time for the Lord. I think that's just, that's what I recommend is the moment that you're saved, it's so easy to be uh, pushed back into the world. And that's what Satan wants you to do is just like, ah, oh, yeah, sure, sure, you're good. But here, you know, continue to play golf, continue to do this. Now, I'm not saying there's something particularly wrong, but if that distracts you and eventually leads you astray, you know, it is a problem. So I prefer to, and I decided I was going to go full in and, and it was really natural. It wasn't like simply a decision. I just really was so hungry to know all about the Lord. So in the next uh, video, I will explain how the Lord started to bring revelations and of course led me to the study of the end times um, and, and, and opened up uh, prophetic uh, words to me, which it just blew me away. Of course, you've seen some of the, uh, the other videos I made, but uh, that was a key. So I hope this was encouraging. I ask you to really look at some of my other videos where uh, you can hear some of the words I received from the Lord and how he's transformed my life. But uh, this is the time to give your life to Christ. Go full in. Do not hold anything back. Ask the Lord to transform you. He will. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you a completely new life. Be blessed. Peace.